All right, for more on this, let's go to Ivan Elan, director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. He's joining me from Washington this hour. Uh, good to see you. The situation there in Ukraine escalating fast. Two Ukrainian helicopters were shut down. An unknown number of people are now dead. Where do you think this is heading next? Well, it seems to be getting more violent all the time. And if the Ukraine is, uh, you know, trying to take over these buildings, that could, of course, give Putin a, a chance to uh, use it as a pretext uh, for a Russian uh, invasion of southeastern Ukraine, um, um, more blatantly, perhaps, than even the Crimean uh, annex invasion and annexation. Sanctions do not seem to be having any impact. What options are left? Well, I think actually the, the threatened threat of sanctions has uh, caused, uh, you know, the uh, ruble to go down and the, um, uh, you know, basically $50 billion to flow out, out of Russian capital. The, the, uh, the Russian economy was in bad shape before the sanctions, and I think the threat of sanctions is often more uh, pronounced and, and potent than the actual sanctions, because you can't evade sanctions over time, and uh, they're mainly a symbolic uh, gesture. The U.S. doesn't have many options. NATO doesn't have many options. Uh, this is the, the uh, Russian sphere of influence. It's a lot closer to Russia than it is to the United States. So even though the U.S. has vast military superiority over Russia generally in that area, Russia has superiority, the local superiority, and that's what will triumph. And those troops, 40,000 to 50,000 Russian troops, are right over the border in Ukraine. And uh, even if they don't invade, they can be used to intimidate uh, the U uh, Ukrainian government and that sort of thing. Well, well, when you say they will triumph, what does that mean ultimately? Well, I think that uh, we don't know how this is going to end. Uh, you know, it could be that Putin is just uh, destabilizing Ukraine before the elections, uh, which are supposed to create a legitimate government in the Ukraine on, on May 25th. The mm -hmm. Ukraine doesn't have a legitimate government at this point, and uh, Putin is making the most of that. So we'll see uh, whether he is sort of de facto uh, annexed the southeastern portion of Ukraine, and he's He's really annexed Crimea. So I'm not sure how the Ukrainian government can win out of this. Uh, the, it looks very weak. And uh, I think, uh, but Russia is weak as well. I mean, uh, they had a friendly government in Ukraine. And don't forget, uh, Obama is right when he says this is done out of weakness because uh, Putin is just trying to uh, salvage something in his sphere of influence uh, now that the government of Ukraine has gone basically to, to be pro Western. Are we on the verge of a civil war? in Ukraine? Well, you know, it could be, uh, certainly, uh, but I think Russia can probably uh, dampen this, uh, these separatists if it wanted to, although, you know, when things get cranked up, uh, who knows what can happen. So yes, there is a danger of things spinning out of control, and perhaps Putin won't be able to control these people after he's stirred them up. And of course, uh, you know, they're taking over buildings and that sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, some of the people in eastern Ukraine, uh, southeastern Ukraine, want to be part of Russia, and some don't. So there's a volatile mix there. It's not like Crimea, where most of the people really wanted to be part of Russia. So I think, yes, you could have a civil war. And of course, that could drag in Russia and uh, maybe even the United States. Ivan Elan, thank you very much for being with us today from Washington. Thank you, Marsha.